Welcome to the Nourishment Mindset Podcast, your guide to good food, good health, and a good life. And now, here's your host, Nutrition Network Advisor and author of the Nourishment Mindset, Dixie Huey. All right, y'all. Happy Transformation Tuesday. What's different? I got a Christmas tree in the background. And there's stuff all over the place. Um, my goodness, Christmas has, uh, the holiday season has arrived. Um, so I hope everyone stays well. Uh, as I said to my yoga class this morning, you know, this time of year can be harried and hectic. And my favorite thing to do is actually slower down. So, you know, if I'm in fourth gear, I try to put myself in third gear and just kind of bring it down and literally slow down. Um, so I hope that uh, is something that y'all can take away today as we settle in. So welcome to or welcome back to the Nourishment Mindset podcast. Here we are on a metabolic mission to either find or recover your vitality. And we do that through real, whole, nutrient-dense foods. That's the main way. That's the, the, the nourishment mindset is all about finding pleasure at the table and really doing that through connecting with others and real, whole foods. But it's also about more than that. Once you go down this rabbit hole... And inevitably, as I begin recording a podcast, the golf course maintenance dudes show up. So I'm going to just draw them out and draw us in here. So real whole nutrient dense foods, but also sound healing practices. And today's guest, the lovely Beth Greer, who I am just some things I'm grateful for this year of meeting her. Um wow. <laughs> she is an award-winning journalist. Her book, y'all, Supernatural Home. Whoa. And this is what I mean, you know, when I say expand the nourishment mindset. It's not just about sitting here at my dining room table and enjoying connection with others or even myself if I'm just eating lunch mindfully. It's also about what we take in with our brains. And in Beth's book, Supernatural Home, she talks about your environment. What are you surrounding yourself with in your home? What's your brain taking in, I even say? So today, we are going to discuss environmental health. So we're going to take a little bit of a break from just the, the usual nutrition focus. And we're going to take an inside look into your environment. This includes your skincare, your home products, etc. And how does this impact, impact rather your health? So Beth, bienvenue. Welcome. It is an honor to host you today on the Nourishment Mindset. Oh, thanks. It's so great to be here. And it was so great to meet you as well. Um, we met a couple of weeks. Well, we met before then, but then we connected over over a nice, lovely meal. And um, I really cherish our friendship. Thank you. Me too. We're both uh, San Francisco. We've spent time in San Francisco. So we didn't know each other at that time. But here now in the Naples area, we do. So Beth, First of all, thank you for taking time today to, to chat with us. You have a truly, like last week's guest, who had to do, Michelle Hearn, a dietitian, had to do everything the opposite of what mainstream nutrition advice would tell her to heal her anorexia. You also have a compelling health story. You eliminated a sizable tumor in your chest without drugs or surgery. Tell us more. So I was running a, a multinational company in San Francisco called The Learning Annex. And um, I was juggling and stressed out, but didn't even realize it. But I really thought I was leading a healthy lifestyle. And, and I prided myself that every day at four o'clock, I'd bring my staff in and we'd meditate for 20 minutes. And I thought that that was, you know, that was it. Um, and so it, I developed this pain in my shoulder, went to the chiropractor and after five sessions, it was getting worse. And he said, you know, I think you need to get an MRI. I think you have a herniated disc. And I didn't do anything. I thought, well, how, how do I get a herniated disc? So I went and the tech said, you know, oh, no, we see like a mass. <laughs> so 
and then I had to wait for the weekend um, to, uh, they thought it was breast cancer, so I went and got a mammogram. It was pretty scary, um, but what it was was a schwannoma tumor. Um, it's a nerve root tumor, and it was pressing on the nerves that ran down my arm. Didn't know how it came to be, but I, I went to see three top Bay Area surgeons, and they all said, no, you have to have surgery. So one said, you know, cut me under my collarbone. The second surgeon I went to said, no, going up through your armpit. And then the third one at, at UC said, um, oh, no, 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 we're going to um, remove one of your ribs from the back, and that's how we're going to access, and we're going to put mesh back there. And I just remember thinking, like, this is insane, and I don't want to do this, and um, there must be another way. And in the years that I was running this company, The Learning Annex, I got to meet Deepak Chopra and Marion Williamson and Wayne Dyer and Louise Hay and all this. So I realized, okay, I want to... I want to heal myself. And so I wound up going down to the Optimal Health Institute in San Diego, and it was a raw food cleanse, basically. And so um, I I was there and I and you were talking about getting quiet. Well, that's part of the, what the, the technique was to really get quiet and tune in. And I asked, you know, the tumor, why are you here? What's your message for me? And the word came back, simplify. I thought, wow, you know what? I'm really not leading a simple life at all. I've got six city company. I'm eating out all the time. I'm not out in nature. And so um, I realized, okay, I need to start to simplify. So first came the diet. And I realized that um, you know, doing raw juices is not sustainable, really. It was a really good cleanse. Um, but I noticed that just in a few days that uh, my, the pain started to diminish and I didn't need to pop a sleeping pill. So that was kind of eye opening for me. And, and then I thought, OK, well, what else can I simplify? And I remember I was home and I was putting moisturizer on my skin and I looked at the label and it, there was a paragraph worth of ingredients in there. And so with my journalistic training, I went online, start researching, and I realized, okay, these are toxic. And our skin is our largest organ of illumination. And it's allowing in crap, you know, basically. Totally. So then I'm thinking, okay, well, what? So then there's the makeup I'm using, the shampoo, the deodorant, you know, all that stuff. So I started switching out to all natural products. So for example, to this day, I'm still using, and this is 20 years ago, I'm still using baking soda as a deodorant. Um, things like that. Yeah, I put it in a salt shaker and like this, and it works like a charm. So I love that was that in your book? I, that seems new to me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. one of these yeah. weirdos that doesn't wear deodorant, and if I stink, uh -huh. I need somebody. <laughs> to <help me. laughs> but I just from your book and also from other like I just I'm like, why am I doing this? What am I doing? Like I, I don't sweat. I sweat from my head like a freak. Like uh -huh. I don't. I don't need this. So like, you don't need it. Right. So right. It down. You need something, use it, but natural. I love it. So then what I thought, okay, then I'm, I'm spraying down my countertops with Windex one day. And I, I look at the label and it says precautionary statement, hazardous to humans and domestic animals. And I think, well, I, I shouldn't be using this. This is bad. You know? So I switched out to hydrogen peroxide, white vinegar, essential oils like that. So lo and behold, it took about, um, let's see, I was diagnosed just uh, before, it was before my 50th birthday. So it was, it was January of that year. And by May, the pain actually was gone. Mm -hmm. And then I, I waited a few months because I was kind of skeptical. And, and I was working with um, a, a naturopath and all that. So I'm doing a lot of detox cleansing, colonics, those kinds of things. So, um, but really cleaned up my diet, you know, just pure, no, nothing out of a box pretty much, um, or a can, for example. And so um, a few months later, I, ha I had the, the mask scanned and, and it was gone, it disappeared. And that was like this giant wake up call to me that our bodies are self healing. You know, right. when you cut your skin, it heals, right? So, um, so that's so that was the journey that got me to to write the book. Because, well, first I started writing for um, a local paper, and, um, and then I took those clips. It was called the Natural Home, and then I took those clips to the San Francisco Chronicle. So I 
I pitched it to them and they said, great. So I write about makeup and I'd write about this. And, that. and then every week they were getting these letters from who knows, you know, the industry. Who's Beth Greer? She's not a scientist. There's nothing wrong with plastics. There's nothing wrong with mercury and makeup, you know. So they basically said, you know, we're getting it's too much work to have your calm. So we can't we can't have you do that anymore. So because, um, you know, we have to respond to all these letters. So I took that those columns and then pitched the book idea to uh, Rodale publisher. And that's how it came about. Bravo. I love that. You are yeah. uh, apparently your voice was a little too powerful. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, uh, I joke in my house, like this book I'm about to release in January, nourishment mindset, it might get me canceled and then I'll know I'm where I need to be if I get canceled. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah, they didn't have that back then about being canceled. Right. It was more subtle, but yeah, now it would be. It's a thing, right? Yeah. So Supernatural Home, y'all. To me, this is a environmental health work of art. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I put not- everything into it. No, really, I put, yeah. I didn't hold anything back. And I re- I talked about what goes in us, what goes on our skin and what surrounds us f- from you know, our sheets and, and paint to EMFs, mold, all that stuff. So, yeah. It is. And it's one of those, you know, I dog ear, right? So this is probably not going to come out so much on this, but like, I feel like I dog eared every third page. <laughs> one of these books where you read it and you're like, shit, now I have to change everything, but it's a good thing. And you're also, you have the practical tips, which I love because you don't have to do everything today, next month, but just, it's more of a mindset shift, which really spoke to me because the nourishment mindset shift is exactly that. It doesn't say you have to eat perfectly. I mean, who wants to be perfect? There's no fun in that. But one of the practical tips that I really liked was the homemade sunscreen. I mean, we're both here in Florida but I don't want to rub chemicals all over myself. And I definitely don't want all those chemicals going into our water supply. Um, That, that really spoke to me. So tell us, I mean, you gave us the backstory of how the book appeared, but why did you write this? Was this like part of your healing? Was this all of a sudden you had to share information you couldn't know? Like, right. I, I, (laughs) it's like, I needed to let people know. I wanted to scream it out from the rooftops because I, what I was noticing So many people were getting sick and children in particular, you know, and I see these mothers slathering the screen, the sunscreen on their kids or spraying them and, you know, with, and it's pretty toxic, the stuff. And then going into people's homes and well, that was the other thing I noticed, um, you know, going into people's homes and they're, they're spraying with scented things and candles and they have, they have coughs and sinus congestion. So, so yeah, I wrote the book, um, it's just, it was a, like an expression of, that I, I couldn't not do it. That was the thing. I couldn't not. And my background is in journalism. So it just seemed like a natural progression. Left the business and started writing and then started going to people's homes and started doing detox home you know, visits. So that, that was very, um, it was just great because some simple things made a huge difference in people's lives. Like the woman who told me, you know, I, I'm on coating cough syrup and inhalers and my doctors can't figure out why I cough. But, you know, when I go to a hospital, she goes, when I sleep in a hotel, I don't cough. And I'm going, hello, there's something in your home, right? So when I walk in, everything seems fine. Then I walk into her bedroom and she's got 20 or more scented candles on the on the window ledge. And I, my throat starts to itch. And I said, well, here's your problem. She's like, no, these are these were gifts. These are expensive. I light them every night. You know, so I convinced her to let me take them out of her home and just see how she felt. Plus the fact when you looked up at the ceiling, there was black soot up there because all the candles had this metal wick. It's lead. So that lead's going into her lungs, right? So I tell people, if you're going to use candles, use beeswax candles and make sure it's a cotton wick without the metal. Who would have thought metal in a <laughs> burning metal? <laughs> <laughs> Right, oh because it keeps the wick standing up straight, so then right. it burns more even. But so yeah, the manufacturers think they're doing a good thing, but they're they're not thinking of our health. That's kind no. of bottom line. They're not thinking about our health. This is akin to me. Of course, I have a nutrition mindset because that's 
as a health metabolic health coach. That's what I think about, but it's all this focus on, you know, we, the, the nutrition label, the, the, the calories, fat, you know, all that's huge. It's like way bigger than it used to be. And the ingredients are, <laughs> my thing is I don't care about any of that stuff, honestly, on who cares? Those are meaningless metrics, meaningless numbers. What I care about is the ingredients label. And that's, to me, that's similar. You know, what's in that candle? You know, it's not how right, much. Right. A lot. A lot of people are really good at reading food labels and they don't ever think about reading the labels on anything, um, cleaners, uh, makeup, moisturizing, you know, all that stuff. Uh, shampoo is <laughs> pretty bad too. Yes, exactly. So um, back in the day, I'm not proud to admit this, but I just thought, you know, I grew up in the South, 70s and 80s. Organic was like, uh, that's just hippie stuff for people who have too much money to waste and, you know, the well-to-do types, whole paycheck, that kind of thing. Everyone knows where whole right. paycheck is. Right, right. <laughs> Why is, I mean, I've come around, obviously, but I would like to hear from you. Why is it important that we nourish ourselves with organic food? Okay. Um, <clears throat> pesticides were designed to destroy the nervous system of bugs. And so you got to think about what what is it doing to our nervous system? We don't see it. We don't taste it. Can't feel it. Can't smell it. But it's there. They're spraying. They're spraying, they're spraying, they're spraying. And so I don't want that stuff in my body. I don't know what it's doing. I know it's bad. I mean, you can get a blood test that will measure glyphosate, for example, which is um, in, in sprayed on GMO crops and sprayed on wheat in particular to, um, uh, to dry it out after harvest. And so... Um, it'll be in people's blood. And then if people get off of the the sprayed foods, it just takes a matter of weeks and it leaves the blood. So it's it's a really easy thing to do to, to stop eating non-organic food. And, um, you know, the, the other additives too, the, the preservatives. So I used to go around uh, with like a little show and tell. Um, and I, and one of the things in my, this is before like slideshows and stuff. So I would have um, real things. So I had a loaf of bread. And the reason I bought it was I wanted to explain to people that if you're going to eat bread, you want to have, you know, may, it should say 100% whole wheat. So um, at the time, when I, you know, I thought wheat was okay, which I don't necessarily think it's good now. But, fall, right. That's part of this journey. Yeah. Right. So um, anyway, this, this, this bag of bread that I got in a plastic bag, I picked it up at Safeway and it said um, made with 100% whole wheat. So anyway, I'm, I'm carrying around. It's been now, it's not in my freezer or refrigerator. It was sitting in my pantry. And every time I'd go out for a talk, I'd bring my- The same loaf. Me. <laughs> the same loaf, the same loaf, right? So it's now, it's, it's like four months and there's not a speck of mold on it. So I said, okay, well, let me just read the ingredients on this thing. And it said calcium propionate, mold inhibitor. So calcium propionate, boy, does that work? No mold. So then I looked up what calcium propionate is, and it said it's um, uh, it causes ADHD in rats. So, you know, laboratory rats. So thinking, what is it doing to us and our children who are eating this? So that so that's the thing. There's There are additives and preservatives and food dyes that are causing, you know, hyperactivity in people. All that stuff, you just want to buy things made with, if you can, like three ingredients or start making your own. I've been, I've been making my own food now much more often. That's great. I always say if you can't pronounce it or you don't know what it is or your grandma wouldn't have known what it is, don't buy it. So that's, I hear you there. That's a good rule. <laughs> See, and the best food is single ingredient, right? It doesn't yeah, even need a label because freaking broccoli is broccoli and beef is beef. <laughs> All right, right, let's expand a little bit out of food. Water, obviously super important for life. Um, what do we need to know about water and particularly plastic bottles? I hate the idea of these being in landfills, but before they get to the landfill, what do we need to know about plastic bottles? Right. So water in general. 
Yeah. So the thing is, um, so if you drive by some of these big box stores or even even Whole Foods, you know, they, they have this um, palette of of products. And, you know, here in Florida, so you've got these big plastic bottles filled with water and it's sitting in the sun for a long time. Oh, it's and, hot you know, here, folks. Even in December, it's like 85 today. That's right. <laughs> so you know that it's leaching. The plastic is leaching into the into the water and then we're drinking it. So we don't want that. And very often plastic is made with uh, something called BPA or bisphenol A. And so very often, you know, so so moms across America decided, okay, we want to get rid of this because it's causing endocrine dis disruption. So they, the company said, okay, we're not going to use BPA anymore. So they put on the label BPA free and everyone thinks, okay, this plastic is fine. No, <laughs> now they're using BPS. You know what I mean? It's just, they're not talking about it. So they just, it's like a little bit of a toxic shell game. That's what's happening. So you want to, I mean, for me, I have a, a whole house filter, um, you can get um, an under the sink filter, something that filters your water, and then put it in a glass or a metal, not um, not aluminum, but you want you know stainless steel, a water bottle, and that's what you should carry around to drink with. Because you know very often we leave plastic. If you're in a plastic water bottle, if you leave it in a hot car, it's the same thing. It's it's not a good not right. a good thing. And then you don't want to reuse. A lot of these people reuse those individual water bottles. They think, okay, I'll just fill that up. The problem with that is you're putting your bacteria from your mouth on the on the water bottle, and that's not good. You're sort of inoculating yourself with bacteria over time. So you want to get a, one that you can clean. Yes. You know, when you finish it, wash it, and then use it again. Thank you. So I mean, water, y'all, right? <laughs> I can't live. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, well, I said we were going to move away from food, but I guess I lied. So. Um, what about tips for our kitchen? You know, cookware is something you discuss in the book. It's like, oh, some of the stuff that's convenience, maybe we're doing it all wrong. What do we need to know about cookware? Oh, boy. So cookware leeches, especially the nonstick, especially like Teflon, you know, DuPont. Um, when I was writing the book, they said, Teflon had announced that by 2015, they were going to do away with this particular PF. OA um, substance. I again, if they did do it away, do away with it, they've substituted it with some other crap. I know it. <laughs> you know, so um, I bought. I invested in expensive cookware made from titanium steel because it doesn't leach, okay. and it's it'll last a lifetime. And so you know, it's expensive. And I've bought things over time. So I bought right. um, wa a water kettle, a water kettle. Because I was making you know tea every day, and that was the thing I was using the most. And then I bought a little, um, a small pan if I wanted to make an omelet or whatever. So those were my two. And then I, you know, a few months later, I bought a larger pan like that. But are you really do, do need to invest in yourself? And um, getting good cookware is important. And so definitely not aluminum. Um, and so many of the restaurants cook in aluminum because it's light and um, it heats quickly. So that's another thing I've been avoiding going to restaurants lately. And when you do go to restaurants, ask what kind of oil they use. Because mm -hmm. uh, here it I is, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. here's a little thing to know about the Nourishment Mindset podcast. I have one rule and one rule only. Every episode, seed oils. Seed oil, right? <laughs> I hate right. seed oils. Get them out of your life if you're only going to do one thing. Seed oils. Yeah, seed oil. Right. But a lot of them are using canola oil. Is that a, is that a seed oil too? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, you go to these lovely restaurants, and they, they could even be organic. And then I'll say, you know, and I'll order a beautiful beet and goat cheese salad or whatever. And it's like, oh, well, what do you have in your dressing? What kind of oil do you use? Usually, yeah. the weight person doesn't know. And then I'll say, is it canola? I don't know. I'll come. I'll come back, and they go ask the chef, and they come back, and they go, yeah, it's canola. So. I have a friend who actually, <laughs> right? It's hard, hard healthy, but it hijacks your fat cells and renders you unable to use the energy, which is why we're all walking around with a bunch of stored energy in the form of vegetables and seed oils. So thank you for doing that because I didn't even have to interrupt you to. Well, I guess I didn't oh. interrupt you, but to to make fun of seed oils. So 
I just want to say that I have a friend and I've never seen anyone else do this, but I'm thinking about doing it. She brings a bottle of olive oil with her to the restaurant and she asks for some lemon and she makes her own because even olive oil, you know, it's, it's can be adulterated and all that. So. Yes. I am actually one of those people. I have olive oil, tiny little glass bottle, not plastic, uh, mm-hmm. that I keep in my purse. Now, do I always oh. remember it's there? No, <laughs> but it is there. Um, oh. Okay. So when I first sort of realized that all my calorie counting was years of wasted time and math and got interested in this idea of nutrient dense, real whole food, I, that's where it sort of stopped. I, I still had a bath cabinet filled with who knows? I mean, scary. I was putting a lot of stuff on my skin. And when I changed my diet, something that just really perplexed me happened. I started getting these rashes. At one point, it was across my forehead, eyes, like everything was just itching. And then it went to like my forearms. I I think I went to like eight different dermatologists. Everyone tried to give me a different cream or whatnot. No one could tell me what the hell was going on. Now, I think it was like an exorcism of seed oil. (laughs) Right. (laughs) I literally like scratched them out of my body. Mm -hmm. Um, And it took time to heal from this. It was not pretty. (laughs) Um, However, what it made me do is I just said, I'm stopping with everything. I'm not putting jack shit on my skin. I'm Mm going to use water. And eventually all went away. So tell us. You know, you mentioned earlier, the skin is the largest organ. Why is it so, you know, it's not just what we put in our bodies, it's what we put on, you know, and I put on, I don't, what do I put in my body? Like a doctor, sometimes Dr. Bronner's like whatever, a little liquid soap to get makeup off. Other than that, I don't put anything on my skin. I'm just done. You know, it's funny because I don't either. And I'm 70 years old. And people say to me, what do you put on your skin? And I was going to say, you uh, you got me at the end. I was going to be like, how old do y'all think this woman is? Eh, 58, maybe 55. <laughs> She's 73. Not 73. I'm 70. Oh. Don't, don't push I mean, me. Is, her, is Donald 73? I, I, okay. Yes, sorry. I'm well, <laughs> she's 108 years old, but she looks 55. <laughs> Okay, so whatever she is doing, let's learn. What do we need to know about our skin? So yeah, you don't want to because what what si- some scientists are discovering is that the stuff that they're putting in these uh, serums and you know anti aging things and the moisturizers, it, it actually it, it works for a little while and then over time it actually wor- makes it worse and it, it does impact our livers and it just it it ages people prematurely using these, what they think are good things for their skin. So I don't, I don't, I don't use anything. I've been using water. And then every once in a while I'll go in every six months, I'll go in for a facial and they go, what are you using on your skin? It's like, I don't use anything. So they, they're puzzled, you know, Um, (laughs) what do you mean? We have 10,000 things to exactly. But every once in a while, I like to go, you know, clean it out because I don't really use soap and stuff. Sometimes I'll use a washcloth in the shower, <laughs> but but that's it. So, um, yeah, our skin absorbs stuff. So and most of the stuff we're putting on our skin has chemicals in it. So that's kind of what you need to know. So that's why I'm using baking soda as a deodorant. And then you can use some kind of uh, oil. I just discovered emu oil. Um from Australia and I, I got a little bottle because I was at the Western Price Conference and they had a booth there and it just looked fantastic. So if I have any sort of irritation or whatever, I put it on. And um, in fact, my partner, Don, had an issue with his ear. And so I put a few drops in his ear and it's, everything's fine. <laughs> so he didn't, you know, because the doctor wanted to put him on some uh, anti-whatever. Steroid, <laughs> antibiotic, combo, you know. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, thank you. So just that's, you know, to me, if there's, you'll tell us what you want your takeaway to be. But for me, one of my, I mean, that was my key takeaway from your book was, you know, wow, I need to watch what I, not only what I'm putting on my skin, but what, what do I have in this house? So um, switching gears a little bit. Okay. So something we probably all have in our house. I mean, I'm 
powered by Wi-Fi right now. You told me you were hooked into Ethernet, so you get you get a gold star there. But EMFs, what are they? Is the concern around EMFs are those just freaky hippies, you know, hyped up, or no. are EMFs harmful? You know, what are EMFs? Uh, EMF stands for electromagnetic fields, and you know, gosh, when I was growing up, first of all, we didn't have cell phones, but we didn't have these giant, now there's these giant electrical poles with magnetic radiation. I mean, have you noticed how many there are popping up all over the place? It's insane. And then all the cell phone towers that are coming up, um, you know, the 5G towers and all this stuff. But what I want to talk about is something that you can take control of right now, which is your phone. Mm -hmm. So I just want to give you a quick tip on yes. what because I have these three yes. meters that I, I measure. And so when I have my cellular data on, now this is for an iPhone, so I don't know what what it has on the um I don't think it has so cellular data on on a um you know an Android phone. But if you go to your settings you don't do uh, this. so right now I'm in airplane mode, but um but you, can you see where it says uh cellular Yes, and so ma'am. when you're on airplane mode, nothing's coming out of this thing. There's almost no radiation coming out. But if I, if you just turn cell, cellular data off, it has almost the same uh, effect as being on airplane mode. So what that does, you can't text uh, I messages and you can't receive an I message, but you can send texts. So they're the little, they come out in green instead of blue. And then you can't search the web or talk to Siri, but you can make and receive phone calls. So I keep the cellular data off as much as possible, when, especially when I'm carrying it around. And then if I need to turn it on, and then a flood of texts will come in, for example. Well, how so, nice that, your brain also to just not be bombarded with communication. You know, you're kind of limiting when you're going to intake well, yeah. communication. Right, exactly. And the other thing that I do at night, uh, because sleeping is so important, having a really good restful sleep. Yes. And what I learned is that when we're awake, we have, you know, defense mechanisms around the, you know, we've sort of adapted to these EMF fields, we kind of, you know, but we're in battle all the time with them to keep our own homeostasis. But when we're asleep, you have no defense, your defenses are down. And so that's when they can really come in and do damage. So that's when you want to make sure that that things are t turned off, especially in your bedroom. So what I do is I turn the circuit breaker off to my room, because even if Ooh, that's something is, even if something's off, if it's plugged in a wall, it's emitting a field. And a lot of people have TVs in their room and they turn it off, but it's still emitting a field. So turn the circuit breaker off. It's pretty simple. Now, I have a friend who told me, well, I can't do it because the circuit breaker is outside the house and it's a hassle and everything. So then I said, well, then go around and just unplug everything. So, you know, I mean, it just. Yeah. What do I have plugged into my bedroom? I got two lamps mm -hmm. and I have a white noise machine, which that's interesting, right? right. <laughs> Maybe the white noise machine is not. <laughs> I help for my good night's sleep. Interesting. Well, there you go. Just turn, just take those three plugs and say night, night. Yeah, I would do that. I would try that and see. And then some people, you know, like to charge their phones in their bedrooms. And I say, no, <laughs> you know, don't do it. Put it in the bathroom or something. Right. Or yeah. they want the alarm clock on the phone. You could hear it from the bathroom. So. Right. Well, I put sure. mine over here and my, my, my bedroom's over here. The more y'all know, right? Yeah. That way, when my alarm goes off, I actually have to get out of bed. <laughs> All right, that's good. <laughs> so, no, I'm not in the mood for you. So it didn't want some, you know, there I go. I love that. That's great. So and the other thing is to turn off your your Wi-Fi router at night, because, again, that is just broadcasting. And so if you live in an apartment, you you got not only your Wi-Fi router, but others around you that's broadcasting. At least you can. Just take control of what you can in your own space. Yeah. So if you can, if you can do those two things at night, turn off the router or unplug, and then turn, um, yeah, or or turn off the circuit breaker. You know that would be really great. 
Brain break. I love it. Also just simple and actionable, like so many things in your book. So <laughs> we just answered my next question, I think. Uh, I had fun writing this one. It was, how do we mitigate EMF exposure and its effects without rolling back to 1982? <laughs> so what we learn is we're going to either unplug everything in our bedroom, turn off the circuit breaker to the bedroom, get the freaking phone out of the bedroom. That's screen rise. You know, it's like you fall asleep with your phone and dent it in your face and you wake up and blah, 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 blah. that is not, a- <laughs> no, <laughs> not good. Wake up and look at the sun or even if you live in Portland where I used to wake up and look at the morning light. It's great for you. Know, I just want to say that's exactly what I've been doing. I've been waking up and looking at the light. It's so it's so important to, to reset our uh, melatonin for the for the evening and all that. It's fabulous. Better yet, if you got bare feet out on the ground, grounding. Um, okay, tell us about your current healing journey. What's new in your regimen? Okay, regimen? well, um, what I so ever since I wrote the book and healed, you know, from from this tumor that I and I avoided surgery, I've been sort of on the on the hunt for natural healing modalities that are not supplements and don't go in the skin, not something that's non-transdermal. And I discovered this stem cell regeneration technology that I'm, I'm wild about because I think that, you know, I've been wearing there, it's a patch. And I think that I've been wearing, I've been wearing the patch for two and a half years. I think I look younger than I did, you know, two years ago for sure. And my husband or partner, Donald, I have pictures of his face that, you know, he had this giant, age spot and it's about 90 percent gone just from i met him that. yesterday y'all and i was like I, re- I i recognize you from those pictures she sent you for <laughs> an <Right>. after dude <laughs> right. i need that for my eyelid i'm gonna try your thing first i've re okay. I've, uh, what, not rescheduled i've currently canceled my planned bluff for oh good stuff, wow really so you take it anyway You'll take pictures before, you know, take, and then you'll see. Here it is. Eyelid hanging into face. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. But if, if you, if people are interested, they could go to uh, truevitalityproject.com. And then I have a bunch of pictures on there. So the way I realized it was working is that um, I had been kicked in the leg as a teenager playing soccer. Someone wasn't wearing sneakers. She had these heavy leather shoes on and my leg never really healed properly and over the year every 10 years I noticed oh it's getting worse you know it's getting worse so then I got these varicose veins and the edema and I was getting injections and and it was just getting it was getting worse and worse and I actually was scheduled to have um, this procedure where they go in and remove the vein that goes down to the foot and then COVID hit and it's like that was canceled so I found these patches, they're LifeWave patches. And um, after three months, the, the you can see it on this website. The the change in my in my foot and ankle is is dramatic. Is you know, so stem cells go where they need to go in the body. They're like they have little homing devices. And so when we age or we're ill, our stem cells decrease in number. And so we want to keep them replenished. So I have and, a question. Yeah. Like- do I have to put it like <laughs> out of my head? <laughs> so no, they, they, they work systemically, so you don't. Okay. I can be a little more discreet is what I'm hearing. That's right. You can be discreet. <laughs> I'll do anything. I once wore a um, CGM sensor. Uh, oh, yeah. To be a nerd and look at it. And I had the hardest time getting the damn things. I don't have diabetes. And their prescription here. So I had, shh, don't tell anyone. I had to import it from Canada. Oh. <laughs> uh, but I love that thing and I'm a nerd with it. So I was just thinking, oh, it'll just be the same thing. So thank you. Um, so tell us a little more. Did you, I'm sorry, you said Vitality Project is where we need no, to go. No, it's, it's. Um, Pardon. Wait a minute. It's a uh, True Vitality Project. True That's what Vitality is. Project. Thank yes. you. And this is where we can go and learn about these patches and how they have helped others and that sort right. of thing. You can download a free ebook about it. So, okay. Yeah. Excellent. And so is this the kind of thing like a 
you know, a CGM sensor where you put it on, you wear it for two weeks or how does this? No, no, no. You wear it for 12 hours. I'll show you. I'm pulling one off because I wear it below my navel. So it's like a little Band-Aid. Let me just get it off. <laughs> it looks like this. Oh, well, it looks so much like what the... Right, but it's it's way for you know it's thin. Okay. So it's crystal. It's it's so it's photobiomodulation, and it, that means that it's light therapy. So the light from within us activates this the the these little crystals in the patch, and that in turn um, stimulates a peptide inside of us called GHKCU, and that peptide doctors are injecting that peptide into into people to you know make them look younger and feel younger. So you don't even, you don't need to get an injections because this works, you know, systemically on our own. So it's like a stem cell band-aid. Small. There you go. Right. <laughs> Yet you have it on. Yes. You don't even know you have it on. Awesome. I am so excited to check that out. And Hey, if I need to put it right here, that's fine. <laughs> um, okay. So we're about to close it out. It's just flown by. I feel like I could talk to you forever. Yeah, I know. Um, I like to ask people to give, I mean, you've already given so many practical tips, but this could be anything. Um, what If the listener just wants to, to take one thing away, we've heard about how to get the EMFs out of the bedroom and mitigate that. We've heard about cookware, heard about stem cells. Mm-hmm. How do you want to leave us one more tip or emphasize one you've already given? You know, I just want to say that we are, um, I, I believe, you know, we, we have this invisible whatever that's, that's running us and, you know, from source God, if you will. Um, and that we're, we're the, you know, we're a life force. We're, we're, we're beings of, um, we're being, we're pure beings basically that have always lived in nature. And now we're being bombarded with all this technology and, and the food is, you know, they they put all these preservatives and additives because they, there's so many of us that they want to make sure that it has a long shelf life and all that. And I guess just the main takeaway is to, to be as close to nature as possible and to, you know, to eat things that are, um, simple, you know, to simplify. So try to step out, be in nature, spend an hour. I remember Angelus Arian used to be my teacher years ago. She, um, she's this wonderful shaman and she's, she used to say, get out in nature an hour a day. And I was working at the learning annex then. So I, there was no way that I was getting out for an hour a day, but now I make sure that I do, you know, to, to breathe in fresh air and get sunlight and, and just, you know, get back to, to, uh, to an, as natural a way uh, and sort of, you know, living in, in with the light so that when it gets dark out, don't have these major bright lights on, just, you know, soften it up. Maybe have some candle lights at night and. Beeswax. And then, yeah. Beeswax candle. And then when you wake up, get it, get that sun in your eyes. So, so yeah. li- living more with nature, I guess, is is my. Oh, that's beautiful, and I love how you came absolutely full circle. When your tumor told you you needed to simplify, you are still listening to your body's message. Oh. Now, what twenty years later? Yeah, thank that's you. Huge. Especially this time of year, y'all. Like, simplify is is great. How do we find you? How do we learn more? I I believe I bought this on Amazon. Is that the best place to find it? Yeah, um, my website, I have a supernaturalmom.com website that you can find the book there too. And you can also find information about stem cells, but the true vitality project.com is, um, is just about, you know, that and my healing journey with the patches. So. Oh, I love that. And do you, are you a social media or are you a, a rebel avoiding social media? I'm a little bit, I'm on Instagram, okay. a supernatural living I don't know. I mean, face, I have a Facebook page, but yeah, more just if you want to reach out, you know, my um, email address is on the website. You can Beth at supernaturalmom.com. So are, I'm you happy a, to- are you still going into people's homes and removing their prize scented candles? Would you do that <laughs> if a listener wanted more? Detox? Sure. And I can do it remotely too, because I've done it um, using, you know, video camera and 
we just, you know, I show them what to do. And if, if necessary that, you know, I'll show them how to buy um, a meter to measure their fields and we can look at it together. Yeah. Oh, and, the meters are pretty inexpensive and worth having. I have one on my Amazon wish list. Hint. <laughs> 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 to anyone, you know, looking for a gift. Um, okay, y'all, thank you for tuning in to the Nourishment Mindset. It was so fun to broaden beyond just what goes in food as medicine, but also your environment. Your environment is either helping or harming your body. So just keep that in mind. If you like today, you know, please go find Beth. Read her book. It's super awesome. You'll have all the dog ears too. Like, share, review, whether you're listening on, you know, my Substack or you're on Apple or Spotify, just please take a minute to review so that we can get this message out to more people. Um, I do love it when y'all send me questions. You can do that on LinkedIn at Dixie Huey. You can do that on Instagram at Nourishment Mindset. I also take topic requests. I have a few great interviews um, lined up, but I'm always looking for ideas. It's about what you want to know. Um, and if you're interested in working with a health coach or giving that loved one in your life sessions with a health coach to work on vitality and improving metabolic functioning, you can find me at favorfat.com. Just send me an email. I do complimentary consults to see if I'm a fit. Um, and I just wish y'all wonderful rest of the week. Thanks again, Beth. It's just, it's always a pleasure to, to be in your presence. Uh, thank you. Same here. Same here, Dixie.